Good evening, everyone. My name is Erica Saunders, and I am a survivorship specialist with the Delaware Breast Cancer Coalition. This evening, we're going to be talking about knowing our risk and sharing about breast cancer among Black women. Before I begin uh, talking about the agency, the Delaware Breast Cancer Coalition, um, I just want to share a little bit about my personal uh, journey and affiliation with breast cancer. Um, so in 2017, I found a lump in my breast. And at the time, breast cancer was the absolute last thing in my mind. Um, my mammograms were all up to date. Um, I physically was in the best shape of my life, but I'm grateful that I didn't ignore the signs. Um, I did end up going to my OBGYN who sent me for some follow-up screening. And it was then later uh, confirmed for me stage one breast cancer. So I did undergo a lumpectomy, which is a surgical procedure to remove just the cancerous lump. And then I had five weeks of radiation and I am seven years cancer free. So I am thankful for the journey and I just um, am grateful. Some people don't understand when I say this, but I'm grateful for the experience of going through cancer because um, it really did give me a renewed sense of purpose. In 2021, I began working with the Delaware Breast Cancer Coalition as a survivorship specialist. And in my role, um, I have the privilege of helping men and women uh, in the state of Delaware who are diagnosed with breast cancer. So it is um, very rewarding and fulfilling work and something that I don't take for granted. So a little bit about the agency. The mission of the Delaware Breast Cancer Coalition is to empower our community by ra raising awareness of breast health issues and increasing access to care through outreach, education, and support services to facilitate early detection and treatment of breast cancer. And just a few statistics of um, the work that our agency has done. Uh, we are a statewide agency, a small but mighty group of women. Uh, we are statewide, so we are in Kent, Sussex, and Newcastle counties and our footprint can be reached um, again across the state. So just in looking over some of the statistics, um, we've held over 334 breast cancer events. Um, we have had uh, over 128 yes to health classes. And we'll talk a little bit more uh, on the next slide what that is, but we offer a class that's free and open to the community at large. We've offered um, over 103 wigs, bras, prosthetic breasts, um, were distributed. We've uh, served over uh, 2,600 local breast cancer survivors at uh, different events that we host. And then finally, we have provided financial assistance to survivors through our breast care assistance fund. Um, because, you know, when you think about a breast cancer diagnosis, um, you know, there is or there can be a financial impact to it, right? So, you know, you're not feeling well, there will be time away from work. And sometimes, you know, that can impact uh, a survivor financially. So we support not only on the emotional side, but on the financial side as well. This slide is just a brief overview of some of our programs and services. And I'll start with Yes to Health, since that was something that was brought up in the former slide. So we understand that health and wellness is so important and obesity will put us at risk for not only cancer, but for other health ailments as well, such as diabetes, uh, high blood pressure, um, heart disease, things of that nature. And so we offer this program as a, an outreach to the community. It's offered not only to breast cancer survivors, but to the community at large. Um, it's a 10 week program, we go online, and we talk all things health and nutrition. So, you know, what does it look like to eat a nutrient dense diet? Um, you know, how do you count calories? What is a body mass index and why is that important? So all of those things are um, what we teach in the class. Um, one of the main things that we do is provide support for our survivors. Uh, you know, anyone that has gone through a breast cancer diagnosis can tell you that it's an uncomfortable position. You know, when you think about hearing those words, you have cancer. Um, it's an emotional uh, experience. And so we offer a number of different types of support groups. 
uh, I facilitate a program called My Sister's Keeper, which was uh, designed for women of color. There is also uh, a Viva La Vida support group for our Hispanic uh, survivors. Um, our caregiver conversation, because sometimes, um, you know, people that care for those that are diagnosed with cancer, they, they have, you know, their own challenges as well. So we provide support not only to the survivors, but to the caregivers as well. We also like to do some fun things, um, you know, sometimes just getting away and um, separating yourself from the diagnosis can be, um, you know, refreshing kind of to um, get your mind off of things. So we do offer Survivor Social, which is um, a program where survivors get together and do fun things, um, just being social with one another. Um, one of our signature programs is called Nurture with Nature, right? So it has been shown that um, being at one with nature will help with um, the recovery process. And so we have a program that, um, you know, we go out in the wilderness, we take pictures, um, you know, kayaking, bird watching, all of those types of things um, we do with the Nurture with Nature program. Uh, in the Loop, that is another program that we offer to the community at large. It's just a way that we give back to the community and share some of the latest and greatest topics um, regarding breast things related to breast cancer. And to date, we have um, trained over 300 peer mentors. Uh, sometimes, you know, survivors are private and they don't necessarily want to um, speak in a, in a group setting, uh, but they may be more inclined to one-on-one uh, -on -one mentoring. So again, we've trained over 300 peer mentors where, um, you know, survivors can get one-on-one -on -one, um, one -on -one mentoring. So these are just a few of the uh, programs that we offer. I will also uh, just mention the Women's Health Screening Program. So if you are uninsured or underinsured in the state of Delaware, um, we have help for you. Um, our Women's Health Screening Team is amazing. Um, you know, we, we can do anything from uh, helping with making the appointments to picking you up, to take you to the appointments, um, we have translations available in both Spanish and Haitian Creole. Um, so our health screening team does an amazing job with um, keeping everyone uh, on top of their mammograms and making sure that they get to their appointments. So these are just um, a highlight of few, a few of the programs that we have to offer um, for these, for more information on these programs and to read a little bit more about some of the other ones, you can visit our website which is www.debreastcancer.org. So we'll get into um, the meat and potatoes of the presentation. What is breast cancer? So breast cancer is a type of cancer that starts in the breast. It can start in one or both of the breasts. It starts when something goes wrong and your cells keep making new cells and the old or abnormal ones don't die when they should. So these normal cells just continue to divide uncontrollably and destroy healthy body tissue. Um, one of the specific types of cancer in particular that we'll be talking about today is uh, triple negative breast cancer. And breast cancer cells are bad because as cancer cells grow out of control, they can crowd out normal cells and it makes it hard for your body to work the way that it should. And there are several different types uh, again, we'll talk about one in particular, which is impacting the African-American community, specifically here in Delaware, in disproportionate rates. So why talk about breast cancer? Why is it important? So everyone's heard the statistic, one in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer in her lifetime. So, you know, we can all think in our own personal lives, um, you know, either we ourselves have been affected by breast cancer or we know, you know, a family member, a friend, someone that has been um, diagnosed. So it is um, very, it's a common um, type of cancer. Breast cancer is the most common cancer in women in the United States, except for skin cancer. Um, and it is the second leading cause of cancer death in women. 
So specifically um, in terms of black women, uh, breast cancer is the number one cause of cancer death in black women. And as I mentioned, we'll be talking about a specific subtype of breast cancer, which is called triple negative breast cancer. Um, one in five African-American women will be diagnosed with triple negative breast cancer. So again, it's something we want to continue to bring awareness to. Wow. So I have a question, yes. uh, Erica. Yes. The, um, that you said one in eight will be diagnosed and that's everybody. That's all that's women. All yep. women, all mm -hmm. women. Wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. But then specifically for the subtype of breast cancer, triple negative, one in five, right? So that's even more okay. startling. Yes. Wow. Okay. Mm. So we can't um, ignore the fact that men also have breast tissue and men also get diagnosed with breast cancer. It's not as common as in women. Um, so one in 726 men will be diagnosed with breast cancer in their life. Um, and, you know, you think about a famous celebrity. So we all know who Beyonce is, right? So Beyonce's father is a breast cancer survivor. So um, and his story is shared there. So Matthew Knowles said he first noticed drops of blood on his T-shirt and then got a mammogram in 2019. Uh, a mammogram then showed that he had stage 1A breast cancer. So he had a mastectomy that same month. And they took out three lymph nodes to see if the cancer had spread in his body. And he said it had not. And also another famous African-American figure, uh, Richard Roundtree, um, who passed away recently. Um, his initial cancer diagnosis was breast cancer. And it did come back in the form of, I believe, um, pancreatic cancer, if I'm not, uh, if I'm not mistaken. But um, his original cancer diagnosis was breast cancer. So... If you think something isn't right, get it checked out. And that is a quote from uh, one of our male survivors, Richard. He is very active in um, with our organization and he participates in a lot of programs. So we've connected, the uh, organization is connected with 11 male survivors in Delaware and we actually have two certified peer mentors. So um, again, it does happen to men, not as often, but it's something that um, men should also be aware of as well. Okay, another question. I'm sorry, I don't. There's not a hand. I don't see the um, raise your hand thing, so I'm. <laughs> I don't mean to keep interrupting, but I had a question about <laughs> what you were just presenting for sure. the men. Mm -hmm. Are they um, for? Um, I know for women, they recommend uh, in the shower around your cycle. Is there a time or method for men to check their breast tissue? Like, is it the same pattern and or is it the um, symptoms totally different? So I, it would find a lump. Uh, that's a great question. I think for men, it's just um, being aware of your body, of their bodies, and just um, you know knowing when something isn't normal. Um, I don't think there's per se a certain time of the month that men would um, need to check per se, but it's just more so um, being aware and. Um, you know, identifying when something isn't right and making sure that that you're bringing that information to the attention of your medical professionals. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, so here's the impact of breast cancer, um, both um, across the country and then specific to Delaware. So this year, uh, over 300,000 women will be diagnosed with breast cancer and over 40,000 women will die of breast cancer. Um, specific to Delaware, we will have a little over 1,100 diagnoses and 160 deaths. The unfortunate reality, even with this statistic, is although white women are diagnosed at the same rate as black women, we die at a 41% higher rate and that um, just cannot be. And that's why we continue to, again, bring awareness to breast cancer and um, the things that we can do um, to reduce our risk. All right, so speaking of risk, a risk factor is anything that increases your chance of getting a disease such as breast cancer. And 
having a risk factor or even many does not mean that you're sure to get the disease. There are two different types of risk factors. So there are non-modifiable risk factors and there are modifiable risk factors. Non-modifiable risk factors are the things that we can't control and modifiable risk factors are the things that we can control. And the best way to learn about your risk factors is to talk to your family about your family history and also talking to your doctors about any personal risk of breast cancer. All right, so let's start talking first about our non-modifiable risk factors. So female, right? We just looked at the slides that said one in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer, but one in 726 men will be diagnosed with breast cancer. So the fact that you are born female um, increases your risk. Aging, right? As we get older, uh, the risk of getting breast cancer increases. And genetics, right? So when we're born, um, we are assigned genes given to us at birth and they are assigned from our parents. Um, our genes are what make us uniquely us, right? So they determine our height, the color of our eyes, the shape of our nose, et cetera, et cetera. And so um, that is something that, again, it's a blueprint we're given at birth, something that we cannot change. Uh, and then also family history. If um, you, know, you have um, a specific type of cancer or any types of cancer on either the mother or the father side of the family, um, that is an increased, that puts you at an increased risk. It's important to note when we also talk about family history that um, it's important to know we should consider both maternal and paternal sides of the family because the genetic mutation that causes breast cancer can be passed down by dad and can cause greater risk for not only breast cancer, but ovarian, pancreatic, and prostate cancer as well. And I like to spend a lot of time on this slide here because these are our modifiable risk factors. So the things that we can actually do to uh, improve our quality of life, number one, but also reduce our risk of breast cancer. So be active, um, 75 to 150 minutes of exercise per week. Uh, one of the things that I didn't share about my story, um, prior to my breast cancer diagnosis, I had started, um, I started running out of a need because I had a, a personal scare with blood pressure. Um, Every year, uh, my job requires a health assessment, a health screening. And one day when I went for my blood pressure screening, um, long story short, the number was within stroke range at that moment. And so that was my personal call to action. And so I started to exercise um, on my own. Uh, but then I started hearing all these wonderful things about uh, an organization called Black Girls Run. So uh, I ended up joining Black Girls Run. Um, I fell in love with the process of exercising and taking care of me. I went from, uh, you know, running a 5K on New Year's Day 2015 to 12 marathons um, up, up until this point. But uh, again, you don't have to be a marathoner like, like me to um, be active. You know, you think about some of the small changes that you can make throughout the course of the day. You know, you can park further away and, um, you know, walk a further distance, take the steps as opposed to taking the elevator. Um, you can even get creative when you're, you know, doing your cleaning in your household. Um, put some music on, you know, get your hands moving, get your feet moving. I always like to say uh, movement is medicine and I, I truly believe that. And so, um, you know, being active is a very, very big part of, um, you know, reducing our risk for breast cancer. Making healthy choices, right? So we all have heard six to eight servings of fruits and vegetables per day is the recommended daily allowance. But in reality, do we all abide by that, uh, right? So we need to understand um, what 
what does it mean to eat nutrient dense foods, right? We need to understand, um, you know, what does shopping the perimeter at a supermarket mean? So all of the things on the outskirts of the supermarket are the things that have most nutritional value. And the things that you would buy in the middle of um, the grocery store are the items with longer shelf life and the things that are packed with preservatives. And so we teach that in our Yes to Health class, um, shameless pr plug for that course as well. Um, but just making sure that we are doing our part and you know, getting our fruits and vegetables, um, making sure that we're drinking our water, making sure that we're getting our rest. And I'll even put in this uh, space, um, managing the stress in our lives because prolonged exposure to stress can definitely have an impact on our overall health. So um, making sure that we are dealing with those things emotionally um, that bother us. Avoiding or limit, limiting alcohol, right? So there are studies that have shown a direct correlation between alcohol and breast cancer. So, um, you know, I won't say you have to, you know, eliminate alcohol because, you know, for some that might not be realistic, but um, just when you can, um, reduce the amount of alcohol that you're consuming uh, on a weekly basis. We want to maintain a healthy body weight, right? So right here, I just like to say that, um, you know, a healthy weight looks different for everyone. So my recommendation is always to work with your medical care providers and, um, you know, talk about what, what's healthy for you. Um, because what may be healthy for me may not be healthy for someone else. So it's a conversation that you want to engage your uh, doctor in. And then no smoking or vaping, right? So um, I don't think that I've ever heard of any <laughs> anything that shows that there is any health benefit to smoking or vaping. Um, so, you know, if you are a smoker, try to um, reduce or eliminate smoking to reduce your risk of breast cancer. And then as we uh, talked about, um, you know, engaging your doctor about any of your personal risks of breast cancer uh, or any types of cancer. You know, you just want to have the open line of communication um, with your medical care team. So I like to point out this fun fact. So breastfeeding for at least one year decreases your risk of breast cancer. So African-American women aged 20 to 44 years who breastfed for six months or longer had an 82% lower risk of triple negative breast cancer than their counterparts who had never breastfed. And so if you're not in the, um, you know, if you're, you're beyond baby making, um, you know, it's information that you can pass on um, to your offspring or your, you know, your children. All right. So what is triple negative breast cancer and why is it so important for us to talk about triple negative breast cancer? So triple negative breast cancer is different because it refers to cancer cells that lack estrogen or progesterone receptors. And you might ask, what are perceptors or receptors? Um, receptors are basically proteins and most cancers have receptor proteins in them. Uh, triple negative breast cancer is one of the more aggressive types of cancer uh, because it is difficult to treat. There is no targeted um, treatment for triple negative breast cancer. Um, it is more aggressive and there is a higher risk of recurrence with uh, triple negative breast cancer. Um, it accounts for about 10 to 15% of all breast cancers and it can have the same signs as, and symptoms as other breast cancers. So Question. the T, yeah, <laughs> I'm sorry. I tried to put one, I tried to put it in the, the chat, but um, you're, I'm sure you're not, you don't have that open, but we could skip that question now that we're on the triple negative. Um, I was always told that um, estrogen, overproduction of estrogen was a cause of breast cancer and so so to avoid soy because that's basically like adding to your estrogen is that am i wrong or is that something 
that's that. a great, that's a great question okay. and there is a lot of information that there's information on both sides of it so um you know i've heard like you said um you know to avoid soy um i've heard reports that it's fine um but i think and i think where our organization has come to a consensus is everything in moderation um you know it's not it's not going to um, increase your risk uh, of breast cancer just by consuming um, soy. But again, everything in moderation. That's that's the the main idea that we want to get home with that. And I'm sorry, okay. I missed I missed your question. What was your other question? Oh, um, the you were talking about uh, to avoid smoking and uh, vaping, and I I just wanted to know if that included uh, cannabis. Ooh, that's a good question. Um, and I don't know the answer to that, but I will be certain to uh, take that back to the agency and see if there's um, any more information that we might have uh, about cannabis and breast cancer. That's a topic that okay. I've, I've never Well, with heard. the, you know, with the licensing changing in Delaware, I mean, it's, it's just something to think about, to put it up there to. Um, and, yeah. Uh, and, and it actually is something that uh, is prescribed to breast cancer. Patients. Right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When they are, um, you know, going through the restlessness, anxiety and not able to um, get proper rest, sometimes that's prescribed as or a, eating. Yeah. My grandmother absolutely. used to because she couldn't eat. So, yeah. Absolutely. OK. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. So um, myth only black women get triple negative breast cancer. So. That's not true. Uh, all women get triple negative breast cancer, but it just seems as it affects African American um, at higher rates, and so that's why we want to continue to, um, you know, keep awareness, bring awareness to it. So knowing our risk, it's important to understand our family history. Um, because about one in 10 of all breast cancers occur when gene changes, which are called mutations, are passed down in a family from one generation to the next. Um, so when you think about um, a mutation and what, it, what exactly that means. So I always like to use the example of a computer program. So a mutation would be a glitch in the program. So if you think about just what that means, it's just something isn't working um, in the way that it should. And this accounts for about 10% of all of our breast cancers. So you may ask yourself, what about the other 90%? Well, we don't know so much still about breast cancer, which is why um, research and clinical trials are, are so very important to us understanding more about breast cancer. Breast cancer may run in a family if other close relatives have been diagnosed with breast ovarian, or other cancers, especially before age 50. All right, you may see uh, soon we have started a campaign at the Delaware Breast Cancer Coalition, and it says first is the worst. You know, we, um, we're the first date. There's a lot of wonderful things about being the first date, but the unfortunate data is that Black women in Delaware experience the highest rate of triple negative breast cancer in the country. So we're number one. And it's been that way for quite some time. And again, we, we still want to understand the why by it behind that. Um, and the way that we'll, you know, continue to understand the why is by continuing to do research and um, continuing to have African Americans participate in clinical trials. And, you know, when we think about clinical trials and medical mistrust, you know, you know, we have a, a history, right, with um, regards to, um, you know, medical things and um, the reason why African Americans mistrust. So, you know, we think about um, Henrietta Lacks, we think about the Tuskegee experiment, and, you know, while that's all understandable, we just have to continue to have open dialogues um, 
and you know make sure that people understand that uh, clinical trials are actually a great thing. Um, and the other unfortunate reality is, um, although African Americans make up 13% of the world's populations, only 6% of doctors are African American and only 2% are African American uh, female. And only 2% of people who have participated in clinical trials are African American. So there is a dire need um, for um, both participation in clinical trials as well as uh, representation on the on the physician level, on the research level, so that more people look like us can do the research and include um, African American people so that we can uh, further get more information and understand more about the disease. So clinical trials foster growth. Why are Black women at increased risk for breast cancer and triple negative breast cancer? So the current data on triple negative breast cancer comes from research studies with the majority of participants being Caucasian. If triple negative breast cancer is a disease that is most common in African-American women, then there is a need for more Black women to be better represented in clinical research studies to help fight the disease. It's the research that helps us uncover why is triple negative more aggressive? Should we change the treatment type? And why does it affect African-American uh, women differently? So again, we just need to keep bringing awareness to it and we just need to um, you know, continue having those courageous conversations. And, um, you know, I, I am a big advocate for STEM related fields. Uh, I encourage all of my children, um, two of which have um, received degrees in physics and biology. And um, I just am an advocate of STEM related uh, fields for many reasons. And this primarily is one of them, just because again, we need the representation. So this is another tool that is uh, available to calculate your breast cancer risk. So it's a prediction model for breast cancer in um, black women. And it basically looks at your age and it also asks questions regarding your family history. So uh, if anyone is interested in uh, seeing what your risk is, you can just take your phone, scan the QR code, and it'll take you to the questionnaire that it'll ask you and it'll provide information. Again, it's a tool, um, you know, it's not the end all be all, but it is a tool so that we can, um, you know, start to look a little bit more into our risk for breast cancer. And does this take into, I know you were talking about um, we African-American women not being part of trials. Does this test take into account the ethnicity of the individual? Well, this is designed specifically for black women. Um, so oh, this, okay. yeah, this is just a, a tool to determine your risk. Um, it, it's not, uh, it's not for everyone. So it's just specifically. Geared okay. So it is just, mm -hmm. okay. Got it. Yeah. So what is genetic testing? Uh, genetic testing is another tool in the toolbox to help us determine our risk for breast cancer. It can help us determine if supplemental screening is needed. So once uh, I was diagnosed with breast cancer, uh, I have more frequent um, diagnostic testing and it alternates between mammograms and MRIs. And um, you know the, the frequency is six months for me as opposed to a year. So the genetic testing will tell you, you know, if you are considered more high risk, then um, you may, your doctor may recommend um, a personalized screening for you. Um, and again, MRIs, uh, clinical breast exams, surgical management options, or uh, chemo preventative options. And if two first degree relatives develop breast cancer, then a person's risk is five times the average risk. And so that's why it's, again, very important um, to talk about your family history and, uh, you know, 
as much as you can get as much information. Cause I know a lot of families, you know, when you think about historically, we're, we're the, you know, hush, hush, you know, keep everything quiet. Um, historically, we have been a culture to not share, um, you know, what goes on in this house stays in this house, but you know, we have to get beyond that and we have to continue to have courageous conversations so that, um, you know, we can put our offspring and our children and our grandchildren uh, in a better position in terms of um, identifying potential risks. All right, so breast exams at any age. So uh, mammograms are the recommended diagnostic tool that we use to um, diagnose breast cancer. And uh, mammograms are low dose x-rays of the breast that can help find breast cancer early before physical symptoms when treatment is most likely to be successful. The recommended age for women to get mammograms is 40. Uh, clinical breast exams says eight, age 18 every year. Um, really, my recommendation would be um, at the time that menstruation starts. Um, because the other unfortunate reality is not only are Black women diagnosed with more aggressive stages, but we are diagnosed at earlier ages. And so the conversation about breast cancer um, needs to start at puberty. Uh, and again, clinical breast exams can be done uh, annually when you go to your OBGYN appointments. And then the onus is partially on us, right? So we should know our body and understand our body and be able to perform the self breast exams on ourselves. Um, so once a month, you know, that's what we should do for ourselves at least once a year with our uh, OBGYN, with our clinical exams. And then once we are of age, unless there has been uh, a greater risk identified than um, women age 40, uh, and up would be the recommended uh, time for mammograms on a yearly basis. And again, if you have family history, um, you need to continue to have the conversations with your doctor. And you know, don't be afraid to um, escalate, right? So another um, challenge that I'm seeing with specifically with African-American women as it relates to uh, breast cancer is, um, you know, we will take our concerns to our medical professionals and our symptoms are dismissed. Don't worry about it. You know, you don't, you're, you're too young. You don't need to worry about that now. No. So we have to learn to be our own advocates. And so if, if nobody knows our body more than us. And so when we see things that are not right, we feel things that are not right. And, you know, you go to your doctor and you don't feel heard. Um, that's when you need to escalate. Um, don't take, you know, don't take um, what that provider is saying at face value. If you really feel like there's something um, that needs to be addressed, then um, take the next step. So this slide is just um, shows our process of our self breast exam. So. You want to stand in front of a mirror, naked, hands at your sides, and look for the following types of um, distortions. So if you see any types of lumps, any skin changes, any dimpling, any swelling, any irritation, any pulling in, discharge, or redness, those are all red flags. So you would definitely want to engage um, your doctor and um, get that checked out. You would inspect your breast for changes in step one with your hands pressed on your hips. Then again, with both hands raised above your head with your palms pressed together. The third step would be to lay down flat. Feel your breast one at a time by lying on your back, using your fingertips from your opposite hand and applying firm pressure. You wanna start on the outside of your armpit near your back because that area uh, beneath your armpit is still considered um, breast tissue. So you wanna start there with a small circular motion and move up and down in lines uh, from high in your armpit to below your breast cleavage. 
And um, I think your um, your OBGYN, if you're not really familiar on how to do a self breast exam, they can assist you with um, you know being able to do that for yourself at home. And this is what I call the ABCs of uh, breast cancer. So breast cancer is the most commonly diagnosed cancer among uh, black women. In 2022, there were about 36,000 new cases of black women diagnosed with breast cancer and an estimated 6,800 deaths from breast cancer were expected to occur among black women in 2022 making it the leading cause of cancer death in this population. So the ABCs of breast cancer that um, I like to leave everyone with is number one, advocate. We talked about, you know, advocating for yourself because again, no one knows your body better than you. Uh, and if you feel something unusual, um, you know, talk to someone, making sure that you are, uh, advocating for yourself at all times. And B, be curious, specifically as it relates to your body. Um, know your body, know your symptoms, know when something isn't right, know how to do a self-breast exam. And uh, again, just be, be attentive to the things of your body. So advocate A, B, be curious, and C, communicate. Um, we've talked about communication quite a great deal, uh, and communication is important to understand your risk. So, you know, we're coming up on the holidays, and while, you know, having a conversation about breast cancer might be uh, morbid during the holidays, it might sound morbid, um, but the holidays is a good time to, to talk about, um, you know, some of the family histories, you know, because you, you don't want to be in a position where, you wish that you, you know, would have taken the time to talk with your family and ask the questions um, before you're not able to. So continue having communication with your family, continue having courageous conversations and uh, continue the uh, line of communication, not with just your family, but with also your medical team to work on those modifiable risk factors that we talked about that will, um, reduce your risk of getting breast cancer. And I will stop there. I thank you for your time and attentiveness this evening. I hope that um, you were able to glean something from the presentation uh, and something that you're able to pass along to someone else. Uh, again, for more information about our organization, you can reach our website, which is www.debreastcancer.org. And to access information shared in this presentation, um, you can just scan the QR code and it'll take you right to it. And always, awesome. we always just like to end with um, saying that we are here to support um, if you or someone you know is diagnosed with uh, breast cancer, or if you know someone that is uninsured or underinsured, needs help with getting a mammogram, we are here to support. So uh, just reach out, our, our numbers are there, our website is there, and we are, um, we're here to serve. And again, I thank you for your time.